Daily News today, government-sponsored students patiently waits for April allowance and Central Bank yet to grant approval. Gold grade at Gold Ridge, very low. And grave mistake from Sol Tuma, but again for Solomon Islands students in Fiji as they receive Black Flakes tuna from the High Commission in Suva. Hello and welcome, I'm Lisa Osifello. A government-sponsored students in Fiji are yet to receive the allowances for this month, April. Solomon Islands High Commissioner to Fiji, His Excellency Joseph Mahanua, told Tavoli News that the students' allowance are yet to be approved by the central bank. Mahanua said, fortunately enough, the commission was able to support government-sponsored students through monies they had saved in the previous year. However, he says the funds are now low and they will depend very much on government's funds still to be received to support the students in the next month. Mahanoa said currently there are 347 government-sponsored students in Fiji, a big contrast to more than 1,000 students usually on government scholarships in Fiji in the past. The High Commissioner praised the government-sponsored students, saying they are also ambassadors representing their country in Fiji as scholars. He says the students, despite the challenges, are well-behaved and have been great ambassadors for the country. He hoped the funds will be approved soon to support the students. Education Minister Lanel Tanagada says currently there are no plans from her ministry for the reintegration of seasonal workers after they complete their work overseas. The Education Minister made this response to the opposition's question on the plans in place for reintegration of seasonal workers. Nonetheless, the opportunities that the seasonal workers are given to work in Australia and New Zealand have the potential to upskill them in their selected fields of work. So the seasonal workers' experiences and new knowledge or skills acquired may help them in their new job on return to the Solomon Islands. What we do not know is whether the seasonal workers will be issued formal certificates of achievement for recognition of their work-related experiences in Australia. Um, and the strategic aim and function of CITESA is to provide leadership to facilitate higher quality tertiary education and vocational skills delivery designed to meet the future needs of Solomon Islands for a highly skilled and productive workforce. Additionally, CITESA is responsible for the promotion planning, uh, capacity development and coordination of the tertiary education and skills sector and ensuring the country has a high quality and internationally respected tertiary system. Uh, CITESA, as we all know, is a regulatory authority mandated by the CITESA Act 2017, and that is to provide for quality assurance of tertiary education and skills development and the relationships between tertiary courses and tertiary qualifications by performing the functions assigned to it under Part 3 of the CITESA Act. And that one is um, preparation and adoption of the Solomon Islands Qualifications Framework, quality standards and supporting policies, accreditation of tertiary courses, registration of providers of accredited tertiary courses. So Mr. Speaker said, most importantly, one of the key roles CITESA is to, um, is to promote recognition of tertiary qualifications obtained in Solomon Islands in the region and internationally. In this regard, should the need arise to facilitate the new formal qualifications attained by the seasonal workers, CITESA should be able to support recognition of the qualifications obtained by using a set of standards, including quality assurance mechanisms and accreditation facilities. At the same time, Foreign Affairs Minister Jeremiah Manelli says his ministry does have plans for the reintegration of seasonal workers. The LMU, in partnership with PESA Plus Implementation Unit and the Pacific Labor Facility, have conducted uh, a study in February to identify areas where the LMU and local partners can work together to support our retaining workers. The LME expects um, to have the final draft of the document before June this year. 
this strategy document will highlight areas of interest based on interaction with retained workers as well as willing partners in country who have indicated their interest to work together with the LMU and its partners. Say some of the highlighted areas which the LMU expects to engage retaining workers in are financial literacy training, second, business management trainings, thirdly, partnerships with training institutions like the APTC, the ERATCs, and of course, SINU, and through CITESA, as we have heard, a partnership with business houses, and access to commercial banks. Mr. Speaker, the reintegration strategy, once endorsed, uh, will form a part of the guidelines in how labor mobility is implemented, especially in terms of how we engage and work with retained workers from our labor mobility schemes. The gold grade at Goldridge is very low, says the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Mines and Energy, Dr. Chris Fehe. Gold grade low. Gold reach him, him very low, uh, on average of 1.1 1, 1. Uh, 1 or 1 1.2 grams per ton. As compared to over the higher uh, grade mines, example in Papua New Guinea, you are talking about 20, 20 to 30 yeah, gr grams per ton. Uh, or the grades of them are very high. So it, it also attracts, you know, major investments. For Goldridge, you have to uh, take care of the issues also, not to mention uh, sovereign risks for operating in the country. We were engaged a, an Australian company for them doing a, a review, final review on the feasibility study for the project before him actually given the yes to start uh, full operations. Geo mining law Australiana him do him that for a review and they came back to present two scenarios and the recommendations from those experts is that the viability blow project here him on concentrates. So what that means is if for the if you may push for the try for producing gold bar as it used to by him you go back to experience same old situations or same, oh, heavy, heavy rain too much, me fella go back now. The case, as the case is for St. Barbara. But in actual fact, they are making a loss because processing costs them too high that they cannot make proper profits. But for concentrates, heavy giving me an advantage of uh, keeping the project themselves go for as many years. The Solomon Islands High Commission in Suva last Saturday facilitated the distribution of the first batch of Solomon Blue dark tuna flakes to students studying in various institutions around Fiji. The Solomon Blue dark flakes was donated by Sol Tuna Limited through New World Supermarket to assist students studying in Fiji under the SPS agreement by the World Trade Organization, Solomon Blue Dark Flakes is only sold domestically. Unfortunately, however, the Dark Flakes were shipped to New World distributors by mistake. Rather than destroying the products or shipping the tuna flakes back to the country, Sol Tuna decided that they be distributed to students instead. The incident occurred last year. It was only recently that New World delivered the Solomon Blue Dark Flakes to the High Commission in Suva. Solomon Islands High Commissioner to Fiji, His Excellency Joseph Mahanua, offers his deepest gratitude to Salt Tuna for the donation. He said the timing of the donations received via New World comes at an appropriate time to assist students. He says Tuna was not only distributed to government-sponsored students, but also shared to other Solomon Islands students studying in Fiji. FAO coordinator in the Pacific region says FAO will continue to support Solomon Islanders through its activities and projects in the country. The Food and Agriculture Organization has been working in Solomon Islands with various government line ministries across a broad spectrum of livelihood. Uh, for instance, uh, on this uh, uh, livestock sector, uh, we are collaborating with uh, the Ministry uh, to set up a stronger capacity 
to um, uh, be ready and also to be prepared uh, to control this potential uh, incoming pest and also the animal diseases. Uh, specifically, we are working with the, the, the Minister of Agriculture uh, on this fall arm worm uh, uh, pest diseases control. So because among the Pacific countries, Solomon Islands is the only one nowadays has been attacked by this very specific pests. So we, we are working with the, with the ministry on this. But also, I think beyond this pest diseases control, animal, the transboundary animal diseases is also something that I feel is very much specialized. So we are working with, uh, with, the, with the government to develop this action plan uh, to uh, prevent and also control, uh, for instance, this African swan fever because it's, it's quite close to the Pacific now. Uh, so uh, we want uh, the countries to, to be ready for such a kind of animal diseases, transboundary animal diseases. In addition to that, uh, we have been working with uh, other ministries, for instance, the Ministry of Forestry and Research on the JEF projects, this integrated forestry management. And also we are working to uh, support the country to establish these protected areas uh, for the sake of sustainability. I think, yeah, the country should have a good uh, kind of arrangement in place uh, for, the, uh, for your nature, not only for the current generation, but also for the future generations. UK Secretary of State for Foreign Commonwealth and Development Affairs John Cleverly denies that UK's beefed up interest in Solomon Islands has anything to do with China. Mr. Cleverly was the first political representative from the United Kingdom to visit Solomon Islands. Well, look, uh, we, we know that China is a uh, significant uh, diplomatic and economic player globally, not just in the, uh, not just in the Pacific, but, uh, but globally. I mean, I'd make the point that the uh, the UK have had a diplomatic presence here in uh, uh, in the Solomon Islands uh, unbroken for a very, very extended period of time, long before uh, many other countries. I'm very, very proud of that. I'm very proud of the fact that we've got a, a, a long-standing uh, relationship. Uh, and our relationship with the Solomon Islands is because of our relationship with the Solomon Islands. It's not defined by a third country. It is not driven by anyone else. This is about two countries that have a long-standing shared heritage, uh, a long-standing relationship, uh, two Commonwealth countries. We share a head of state, um, and this is about uh, this is about the UK uh, utilizing our unique network of very intimate relationships all around the globe, through the Commonwealth and other institutions uh, as well. Um, and of course, we want to make sure that that benefits the UK. We also want to make sure it benefits the Solomon Islands because the best relationships are, are ones that work for both counterparties. That's what's driving this. Um, and as I say, it's a relationship that's very, very long standing and will continue way into the future. And moving on now to regional news, ABC reports that American Samoa has issued a public health emergency after an outbreak of measles, which has spread across the U.S. territory. As of Tuesday, there has been one laboratory-confirmed case amongst an 8-year-old and 31 suspected or probable cases of the highly infectious disease, according to the Department of Health. During a press briefing, Dr. Scott Anessi, the department's lead epidemiologist, said the suspected cases are in children ages between two months old and 13. Anyone who tests positive for measles has been ordered to isolate for 21 days, while those who have or may have been exposed must quarantine for up to 21 days. That's local and regional news. Do stay with us yet. Up next is Tabuli Sports.
Welcome back in Tavoli Sports. A week-long Stage 2 training camp has commenced for athletics athletes. The training is specifically a follow-up session for athletes after the first training camp and competition last month in Gold Coast. Currently facilitating the training are international Olympic gold medal coaches from Australia. So this training camp is a follow-up from when the athletes went down to Gold Coast in March. Um, they were there for a training camp that led them to a competition, um, the Queensland State Championship. So the coach that they were working with in Gold Coast is now here in country. So it's also good for all the other development squad to also have um, have sessions with her. So that's what the training camp is about. It's a follow-up from the recent one that was in Gold Coast. So we believe that it's a very important training camp because at the moment we know that athletics is the highlight of like the Pacific Games in all sports. So at the moment we do have a lot of athletes. So now that she's here, she'll be able to um, identify who's doing what event because there's a lot of gaps in athletics that we still need to fill um, with the Federation. So having her here to identify the athletes, it's um, very important for the Federation as well as like CINES. So we are really um, happy and grateful for this opportunity where we had the coach who was with them in Gokos now here in country. Confirmed today, seven of these athletes are in the relay team to Gold Coast from the 5th to the 7th next month. All the best. And the nation's junior weightlifters last week set a record of winning eight gold medals at the 2023 Australian Junior Under-23 Championships. Jeremy Guao speaks to some of the medalists today during training. It's only one day after arrival, the nation's junior weightlifters are now back in full-time training session. A far-reaching achievement for these athletes is very timely and a memory that will go down in history for them. We're happy to us. We're competing. We're competing. We're competing. 70 kilo loss not 70 kilo na we lift him and we're clean and zek 80 kilo. And we were proud to us for me winning two medals for Solomon Island. We were happy to us first time for me for Golden Dream competition. We played with a lot of different uh, people. So we were happy to us because we didn't come back medal for Solomon Island. We watched him uh, squabble there that was him total blow me and was him squaring. Yeah? And bar he team now, same lo gold medal. Me happy same time now, same excited, over excited, and one thing me ex over excited lem because me doing personal best lo me during na uh, uh, Australian Championship where me fall go attend him. These athletes were selected from the Solomon Games and also school games, but determination and dedication has brought them this far. Team lo me me take him go every junior athletes. Yeah, and him under 23, and most of those athletes I me take him now from school games, lo carnival ba yeah, and me fa build him ota from lo there, but me fa like ot come train lo sinis, and me fa give him intensified training like morning and evening yeah, and then him go with team too, or say me fa give him ota for look after him good discipline, lo kita seleva too, and I think the most important thing no ma, if you me discipline him team lo me, then. Many of these young weightlifting athletes are ready and set for more. The time for lifting weights, so you, him or him, you miss him one day, him or him, you miss him one full year. Him na sport, him or you come back, but you start back. So him na, or him, but me train, but me push hard, malo training blow me, and me, but look forward for doing personal best ma, lo total way me kasi. Uh, nara game lo India tu nara big game ba mi fa go do India e eh, another game next month ba mi fa go do him lo ta Gold Coast and oh, because ba mi fa gare competition lo he tu lo number 19 next month so me have to train hard mo for to keep nara goal mo for Solomon Island though this might be new for some athletes confidence is what matters the most what really stand out lo team lo me like 
ota ada coaches lo Australia ota kamu mau cene man ota atlet sbi ota lifter sbi ota bara garing good teknik for good man then oh osem ha ot golodea ota bara strong for good ya then mise oh thank you na osem what stand out nama ot atlet sa golodea ota bara Aimim na what ota go for me you can just see like low face blota kami se ba intala set low weight ose me you ready for him ota just talem sir ya coach me ready for him whatever you talem ba me fala do him 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 na what ose me proud lot athlete ya the event last week has not only made the junior weight lifting team achieve gold but also most of the athletes had performed their personal best in preparation for the pacific games this november jeremy gwal tavoli sports and with that, that sports that also wraps up our Tavoli News Bulletin. I'm Lisa Ossie Fellow. Thanks for watching.